We'd like to hear the ocean song again. Snap mountain trails that touch the wind. Cast your heart down long, winding country road. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Steve Tomey. I'm the manager here at Colonel Allensworth State Historic right. Park. And here with me is uh, Gerilyn Oliveira. She's the park interpreter one. She doesn't move. I hope everybody's enjoying this. You're talking to virtual photo walks, and we uh, provide these uh, things for people with uh, disability, illness, or isolated by age. Welcome to Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. And uh, behind me is the Heinzman and Company General Store in beautiful downtown Earl Allensworth, circa 1916 from about 1911 to 1950 when Mr. Heinzman passed away. They also housed the library there from about 1931 to 1943. Wide variety of articles and artifacts that would have been used in the Heinzman store during our time period, which is about 1908 to about 1918. The Walmart of the day, so to speak. So you had all sorts of anything from hardware, to canned goods, to large sacks of flour, to grains, to coffee. And there was people who remembered coming here in the 1940s uh, to get an RC Cola from Mr. Heinzman. So uh, if he had a large time here in the community and he was very popular amongst a lot of the local kids that ran around the area in the 40s. So. Post office, it was a, a pharmacy, it was everything. It was everything at one point in time, yes. So why don't we go over and take a look at the pharmacy part. So oh no, that would taste yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really make you think twice on a how sick you were on telling anybody on whether or not you'd get some of that cough medicine. <laughs> but there are some items in here that uh, are familiar uh, that hopefully we'll run across like Ghirardelli chocolate and Lipton tea. Um, and, but uh, something that you wouldn't find in your store nowadays like uh, Hofstetter's stomach bitters for uh, stomach ailments. Well, that, or, would, that would fix you know, right up. <laughs> yeah. <it would. laughs> or uh, when we get down a little further, we get to a little bucket of sheep's braids from the Swift's uh, butchering company out of Chicago. So uh, that's not something you find on your everyday market anymore. You might as well try some of this stuff, June. You've tried everything else. <laughs> Listen, just because I was on mute, don't think I can't get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Pure loud. Oh, my gosh. A spearmint. Golden bear. Uh, cookies. That's uh, part of the fun of the, when people do come to the park and we get to take them in the buildings is we get a lot of, oh, I remember that, or I remember my grandfather or my grandparents having that. Yeah. That's part of the fun instead of bringing people into the park. So I'm glad that you're getting to experience some of that yourselves. Uh, I've used that kind in the jar. This guy here? Yep. Yeah. This quickens it, so it goes from uh, the, Dasher type to about uh, 20 minutes to this crank type, which could take you about only 10 to 15 minutes. So we're moving in the technology at the turn of the century. We were getting a little more advanced. Uh, even the washing machine was becoming, uh, was invented, although it wasn't used in Allensworth probably until uh, a little later in years for our time period. Mentioned, but this here is a tobacco cutter. So you'd come in and instead of buying a tin like you can for chewing tobacco, you'd buy a, a plug's worth and you could cut an inch or two inches off, probably depending on how much you could chew during a day. Uh, so you buy a day's worth of plug and you come here and get this cut 
or you can just go in more sophisticated and go to cigars there. Now we're looking at an assortment of grinders, sausage press, seeds for growing your own vegetables, and basically anything you'd need for you can get here at the, the general store. There we go. I had a set of sad irons. These yep. are nice. For 75 cents, you could get two bases and a handle from the Sears Roebuck catalog in 1908. And I'm sure that made uh, ironing a heck of a lot easier, having to go from the small iron irons. Funny little round thing right here was a knife sharpener. Still not 100% sure how it's used, but uh, we do know that it was a knife sharpener. There's a series of pads and stones inside that would basically sharpen and buff the knife at the same time. And then next to it is an ice cream maker, which uh, I know a lot of us remember, at least I did when I was a kid, having to sit on top of it and crank the ice cream because uh, I'm sure it kept us out of our parents' hair for a little while. Corn shucker, I guess, so to say. The corn would dry on the stock and then they would take it off the stock when it was already dry, run it through this machine and the knobs inside of it here uh, would pull the dried corn off the cob. What is that? This would have been a, um, a case for holding nails, screws, washers, nuts, bolts of sizes. It's kind of hard to see, but a lot of on top of each one of these triangular drawers is Measures, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah, there we go. I've never seen one like that. And it's sitting on a base that also has uh, several drawers. So this is one of the nicest pieces that we have in the park. And one of the ones that most people, as soon as they walk in here, they're gravitated straight towards that. I've never you can go over and take a look at the artwork. Yeah. I have to shoot through the glass, so hopefully you can see it. Oh, it's oh, great. That's beautiful. Yes. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. And of course, it was very common for gentlemen to have a watch, a pocket watch like this. Mm. Often it'd be one of your more prized possessions. Well, many of the name brands that most of us grew up with were just starting out. In 1908. Yeah. My sister came in here and saw the Fells naphtha soap and remembered that that's what my father used to get rid of poison oak whenever he was walking through poison oak. So. Oh, yeah. yep. Round, so it also is a very harsh soap. I think what we're going to do is take you for a walk outside in the park so you can see what the park looks like from the exterior. This is the Heinzman's home. So behind their store, they had their house. Very common. Many of the businesses here, people actually lived on site. Excuse me, Oscar Over Demonstration Garden, where he proved that the area was uh, suitable for agriculture, specifically gardening or growing cotton, which later became the primary crop for the area. Uh, for many, many years. If you've ever read Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, a lot of that is set in this general area. In fact, that's how my grandparents actually settled in the area in the town of Alpa. It's about seven miles away. They came out here during the Dust Bowl. Historically, the town had artesian wells, which uh, if you poked a hole in the ground, up came water 24-7. Uh, <laughs> by the end of the historic period, they had to bring in pumps. And uh, those old pumps could only work maybe 200 feet. Today, our well is 1,600 feet deep. Wow. 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 That just shows how and actually, the water source for this garden is right here. And it's set up to kind of mimic the old artesian wells. And then it flows into the garden, and you have to flood irrigate this garden. It's the only way. Mm -hmm. it. Your water table has dropped from a few feet to 1,600 feet down. Well, the well is 1,600 feet deep, but we usually pump at about 300. Wow. 300 to 350. That's still a lot, though. Oh, yeah. It's quite a bit. All of our water comes from the snow melt. And uh, those mountains are about two and a half hours away, roughly. 
maybe three or four, depending on how high you go. And those are the Sierra Nevada fall. And the uh, old time settlers um, basically recount uh, times when they could walk from the Pacific coast all the way to the Sierras under tree cover the whole way. Right. Wow. Uh, the valley was dotted with Valley Oak. And that was you know, during the gold rush days. But, and that was more Northern California, more than so than central. But with the gold rush and everything else going on, all the building, all those trees are all gone. Well, that concludes our uh, planned program for us today. Thank and you. We really appreciate it. This is excellent. Yeah, and we'll have more programs here as the year progresses. And like I said, we well, thanks very much. That was a great show. And we're looking forward to seeing the rest of your uh, displays. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we. We enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun. It's very different for us. Uh, we get Thank you. Uh, really enjoyed thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.